If you're looking to take photographs of mushrooms, then look no further. This video is going to be the ultimate guide in finding, photographing, and editing your mushrooms. Let's jump in. So the first thing you're gonna know when you're looking for mushrooms is when to find them. So they do grow all year round, but the main seasons are, I would say the beginning and end of the years when the weather changes from warm to cold and cold to warm. Because they kind of like it warm, but they also like it wet. So the end of April, sort of May sort of time is a good time to find them. And then again in October, November sort of time when the, wind, when the weather changes. Uh, so that's probably your best times to go looking for mushrooms, but they do grow all year round. And if you go to the Mushroom Diary, I think it's called mushroomdiary.co.uk or .com, I'll put the, the link on the uh, screen there. Uh, they've got a list of not all the mushrooms out there, but a, a good list of mushrooms in the UK, I believe. Um, and they will tell you the times of years that they're available and when they when they fruit. So I'll pop that up on the screen. Um, so that's when you find them. Now we need to find out where you find them. The where to find them is usually found in fields, in around fields, and mainly woods would be the best place to look. So coming to the edge of woods, the very edge of woods, there's a lot of mushrooms that live around the edges of the woods, but obviously deep into the woods as well, there's quite a few. Um, so it's just looking for the type of mushrooms that you want and there's various types of mushrooms and they grow in various locations. So finding a wood is always a good start to finding some mushrooms. So one excellent place to look for mushrooms is around the bases of trees. So various mushrooms live off trees. So you've got ones that have like a symbiotic relationship where they feed the tree um, sugars that they break down from the nutrients in the soil and in turn the trees, vines, uh, shoots and uh, roots, sorry, um, will feed the mushrooms the water that they need. Um, then there's others that will live off trees like bracket mushrooms and it will just kill the tree. So around trees is always a good start to look for mushrooms. So another one So not just around trees, but around rotting trees, so like just tree stumps that are grow that are growing. They're not growing. Um, tree stumps are in the ground. Um, mushrooms like rotting wood. Um, the other place is in the mulch. In you find them in on the forest floors. So they like to live, feed off the decomposing leaves and all the bark and the trees that come down. I will say this, as soon as you start looking for mushrooms, you'll start seeing more and more. So how many can you spot just in this area? Quite a few different types. They tend to be quite camouflaged. They tend to blend in well with their surroundings so and they they tend to blend in well with the surroundings so just looking under leaves around leaves uh, what you think is a leaf could be a mushroom so just keep your eyes peeled and have a good look the sizes of mushrooms vary as well so this one for example that's the size of my hand next to it look so that's quite big. And then they range from um, here, look. So there's one. So there's my finger next to it. So they, they range in size from extremely big to extremely small. So keep an eye out because even the small ones, if you've got a good macro lens, um, you can get some really nice pictures. So if you're looking for a specific type of mushroom, then it's always good to know your trees. So. They like to grow around various types of trees. So silver birch, ash, oak, all those sorts of trees have different types of mushroom. So the best time to look for mushrooms would be early morning. Now, obviously rainfall is a good indicator that there'll be mushroom growth around this sort of time of year. Um, if, there's a, if there's a good soaking in the ground, uh, the mushrooms will grow maybe um, two or three days after the rainfall if the, if the rain's wet enough. If the rain's wet enough, if the ground's wet enough, 
they'll continue to grow for two or three days afterwards. Obviously early morning is the best because it, it's, it's avoiding the insects and all the little creatures that wake up and start eating. So they'll eat the mushrooms and trampling. You get dog walkers, deers, foxes, badgers, whatever's in the woods. Um, you'll get all that trampling your mushrooms. So the earlier the better. Obviously there's nocturnal creatures out there that will do it as well. But um, the earlier, earlier in the morning the better. And just a, a little thing to remember is when you are going to go out and take photos, take either a ground sheet or wear something like what I've got on now is waterproof um, because the ground will be wet and you will probably need to be laying down to take the photos um, which I usually end up laying on the floor I would normally end up getting dirty I don't normally have my waterproofs on because I normally go out to do a video and I find a mushroom that I wasn't expecting to photograph so me I usually come unprepared for it but if you're specifically coming out for mushrooms just wear the right clothing because it, it can get wet and muddy and that being said that they'll grow those two or three days don't if you find a location that's got some good mushrooms in don't go away and think oh I'll come back in a couple of days and grab those images because they rot quicker as just as quick as they grow so if you find mushrooms that are in their prime and they and they look good get those images that day don't don't wait at all at the time of year that mushrooms are out and whereabouts to find them and the time of day to shoot them the next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to set up your shot. So first of all, one thing I would say is find good subjects. So there's going to be mushrooms that are obviously eaten or, or you know, falling over. Or, or if, if that's the only ones you can get, then great. That's the only ones you can get. But if there's a choice of mushrooms, just have a good look around and look for ones that are almost perfect condition. Always makes for a great photo. Um, the next thing to think about is your composition. So there's a few things, obviously everybody's opinions varies and you know some people like a messy background, some people like a clean background, but mushroom photos I think look nice, either standalone, so a really good bokeh in the background and the mushroom on its own, or a little bit going on in the scene, maybe around the base of the mushroom, up the side, so maybe like coming off the side of a piece of wood maybe, um, so compositionally, uh, diagonals, rule of thirds, leading lines, uh, contrasting colours, all those sorts of things um, will make your mushroom picture even better. So look out for those things when you're taking the photos or when you're when you're finding the, the mushrooms that you want. So for example, I've got this one here. So you've got so you've got this yellow one here, and it's got a green sort of background to it. But the, the background's so close to the mushroom, it's not going to give me any uh, background blur as such. It will give me a little bit, but not as much as I'd want. So this mushroom is probably not going to be the greatest to photograph. There's not a lot around here, and I probably will get this image anyway. Um, but ideally, I'd be looking for another subject or trying to find an angle. Maybe, maybe this is loose enough maybe I could come around at a different angle and get the photo I might I might give it a go so compositionally just think about what's in your frame and how you set your camera up okay so so as regards to the composition so it all depends on the type of photo that you're um, taking so this one for example uh, as you can see the mushroom is coming in from the left hand side and it's going up a diagonal in the right to the right so the way I'm setting up this image is that I'm coming in from the left and I'm giving it a space on the right. So you can see that it has room on the right hand side. So it just not goes. So if I was to set it up like this, for example, it doesn't feel so natural. It feels like it should be, it's going somewhere. It should, it needs more space. So that's, that's what you would do is set it up. So it has the space on the right hand side. So just little things like that with the composition is going to make a big difference to your, to your image. So let's say this is the composition we wanted to go for. Now what I need to do is I need to look. I can see straight away a couple of things that, that's wrong with this. So you can see here there's a, uh, what is a part of that twig that's coming out of the mushroom. So here, here and here that goes up right up through is all distracting elements that's gonna just make that image look 
a little bit worse. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and move as much of that as I can. I think that big twig might not be able to come out of the way, but I might be able to pin it back a little bit under there. Okay, so this one the same. Does that make a difference? No, we've still got this one. Um, okay. Okay, so that's a bit, that's a little bit more cleaner. dead leaf there and there's a little leaf there that's in the way and then don't be afraid don't be afraid to decorate your scene so if you come across a scene like this and it doesn't look very good the background doesn't look very good don't be afraid to move things out of the way or add things to make it look better so that's probably the best I'm going to be able to do with this image. Okay, so that's just moving some, some bits out of the way just to try and make it look a little bit nicer. So there's not, there's just bits that have fallen, I think. So that's the image cleaned up in the background a little bit. Now, don't be afraid to add stuff to the scene as well. So if you need to go and get some bits and bobs from the area around just to give it a bit more um, depth of field or something behind or something in front, grab some stuff. I've bought a couple of little pumpkins, not normal to find in the wild, but what I was hoping to do was, because these are mini ones, is to put an extra mushroom and make the mushroom look a lot bigger to make these look like full-size pumpkins but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that but I'll have a go so now you've got a clean background and you've got your mushroom positioned the way you want okay so the next thing to think about is your lens choice so you've got macros which is this one it's 100 mil macro you've got wide angles such as this one and telephotos and then you've got your normal lenses in, in between now if you've only got um, a wide angle lens that doesn't mean you can't take good mushroom photos okay so this first image that I'm going to show you is taken with the wide angle lens now all I've done is I've focused on the edge of the cap so if you're unless you're photo, unless you're going to focus stack then you want to make sure your focal point is right at the forefront of the picture the first thing your eye lands on when it looks at the picture um, it's just gonna it's just gonna make it look a lot more pleasing so i'll do the same composition as much as i can just to show you the difference between a wide angle macro and a zoom So that's the macro shot. I've had to come away a little bit further just to get the same sort of composition. But as you can see, there's not a lot of difference in the two photos. So difference between a wide angle and a macro is not a lot. Now I'm going to stick on the 70 to 200. So bearing in mind the macro is 100, this one's going to be significantly closer. I'm going to have to come back a little bit further. So that's the same image with the three different lens types. So with the ultra wide, the macro and the telephoto. And they're giving you three the similar images. So the lens type doesn't really matter as such. The only difference it's going to make is how close and how far away you are from your image and to how easy that makes taking the shot for you. Okay, so the next, the next thing you're going to think about when you're, once you've set up your shot 
is tripods. Do you have one? And if you don't, how are you going to take the photo? If you haven't got a tripod and you can extend your shutter time so you can, you can expose the image correctly, um, the easiest way to do that is either to introduce a flash or a solid light, which I use a solid light just because I find it easier to um, control. I can move it around a lot easier. But that's just your choice for how you want to do that. You can either have flash, you can, have, you can stick it on a tripod, get that sturdy um, shot so you can open up your shutter for longer. So that's something to think about when you're setting up your shot, is how are you going to light it or how are you going to expose correctly? How are you going to expose the image correctly? Okay, so there's two ways you can take this photo. So you can take it a singular image with a, well, there's lots of ways you can take it. You can take it with a shallow depth of field, a wider depth of field, um, however you want. But the way I would take my images is, so a singular photo. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take a blank frame quickly. So, oops. Okay, so there's a blank frame. So we're going to take a singular photo. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our focal point is right along this ridge, right along the forefront of the mushroom, and that's where we're going to focus. So that's that image. So nothing wrong with that image at all. Perfectly fine. The second way we can do this is focus stack the whole of the mushroom. So each time we turn the focal ring, we'll focus on a different area of the mushroom, and I'll show you that now. So here we can see I'll zoom in a bit more. You see the top of the mushroom's not in focus. So if I turn the focus ring, you can see more and more of that goes into focus. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get all of that in focus. Now, so when you start a focus stack, just pop your hand in front of the thing to take a blank slate, basically. Um, and then that way, when you get it back in your editing software, you can see that your start of your stack is where the black uh, frame starts, and then when the black frame ends is the end of your stack. Two ways we can do that. So the first way is we can chimp it. Now, that's basically take a photo, look at it, make sure it's in focus, and then we can look on the back of the camera, set the new focus, retake the next photo, and then do that and do that and do that and do that and do that. That's a bit of a laborious process, and I'll just give you an idea, just show you quickly, that how that process works. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the image up on the screen, we're going to zoom in, make sure it's nice and sharp, we're going to take that image, then what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, and then we're going to move our focus ring ever so slightly, then we're going to take that image, then we're going to zoom in, then we're going to move our focus ring ever so slightly, a little bit too much there, take that image, and so forth. So that's how you can focus stack your image, and you can do that all the way from front to back. It takes a little bit of time. Now what I do is bit of a cheats way really and that is I've got some tape on the top of my lens as you can see here I first find my focus where I need it to be and then I move the and then I move I'll move the the focus on the lens to that point okay so I know now that's perfectly focused. So now I look at the little lines on my thing. As I'm turning my focus ring, I then look at, rather than looking at the image to make sure it's uh, focused, because I know where my focus point is, and I know turning my ring to the left is going to focus from front to back, I can just grab my ring take the image Take the image, take the image, take the image, take the image, 
take damage. And I'm moving it ever so slightly, so it's like hardly anything. And I'm on F11. That's the way I do my focus stacks. So when I have finished all my stacks, I can then go back on the camera and then I can just play through them and just look at the rake and make sure they are fully stacked. Because once I've zoomed in on, on the preview, it will stay zoomed in in that area and I can just go through each photo to make sure that the focus moves down as it needs to. And then I can go back Lightroom, adjust the photos, blend the photos, job done. So that's focus stacked. I will pop that image up on screen without any adjustments, just as the picture is. And then we're going to jump back to the computer and I'll show you how I process my images and how I color correct them and all that sort of stuff to finish the, uh, finish the video off. Okay, so I'm back home and I'm at my desk. So may have a little bit of background noise here because my two-year-old is running around and she is... Hi. She's not being quiet, so just expect some baby noises. We've loaded the photos up into Lightroom, so I'm going to jump over to the screen recording and show you how I process my images once they're in Lightroom and then again in Photoshop. All I'm going to do is I'm going to make some basic corrections. I'm not going to do too much. Now you can either click Auto, which will do all the corrections for you, and it does a pretty good job, like so, as you can see. or you can do the corrections yourself. So to do your corrections yourself, start with your crop, bring your crop to where you want it to be. Say so you want that down there. Don't really want the crop moving to be honest, but let's do that. Um, then you're gonna wanna do your temperature. If you've got your white balance wrong, or if you just want it a little bit warmer, which is what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna bring up the temperatures to make it a little bit warmer. I'm going to leave the tint, um, the exposure I'm going to leave, contrast I'll leave, highlights I'll bring down a little bit. Oops. And the shadows I'm going to bring up, whites I'm going to bring down, blacks I'm going to bring up. And then my texture, um, Gonna give it just a little bit of texture, a little bit, tiny bit of clarity. I'm not gonna dehaze, uh, make it a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more saturated. Now, uh, that's a bit too orange for me, so I'm just gonna bring the orange down. Should be fine, and that green's a bit too green. But what I might do instead of just bringing the green down, I could bring the green down like that, and it makes it less obvious. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clone it out in Photoshop. So you're going to go to the end of your stack, where you do black images here, hold shift, left click, and then right click, click edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. And then that will open up as a new file in Photoshop or several files in Photoshop. Okay, so once it's opened in Photoshop, we're going to do shift, left click to the bottom image to select all. We're going to click fire, uh, edit. We're going to click auto align layers and click OK. And that will just align the layers in case some of them were uh, have moved during the process. I don't know why that's looks a bit dodgy, but should be fine. Okay, so now we've got an aligned image and you can see the square uh, wasn't that far out. I don't know why it's moved that much, but it doesn't matter. Then we're going to click Edit, Auto Blend Layers, and click OK. Make sure they're on stacked image and let that do its thing. Okay, so now the image is aligned and blended. We're going to right click and click Merge Layers. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to edit the little things we don't like about the image. So there's a stick coming out here, there's a leaf here, there's a bug which got 
edit it in here and a whatever that is on the top of the mushroom here. The only reason I'm going to get rid of the bug, this whole thing as she is a little bit off, but I might leave the bug actually. Just get rid of that thing there, whatever that is. So we're going to get clone stamp tool and then we're going to alt select an area just to the side of that. And then we're going to paint that in. You could have your opacity set to 100% and it will paint in a bit quicker. But I like to just do it gradually. It's a little bit more control. Like so. There we go. So that's gone. We'll do the leaf. And a bracket, right, right bracket to bring up our brush size. Alt click in an area. Then we're just going to paint that. Oops, not too close to the mushroom. So Control Z to undo that. Alt click in an area, not too close to the stem, so you don't come over too far. And then we're just going to paint that out like so. There we go, so that's that gone. And then it's just this twig here, so a bracket to smaller that down a bit. And I'm gonna go Alt to the top right. What the hell, top right. Like so. And then, Paint that out. Like so. So that's my correction done. If you wanted to get rid of that little bug, it takes two seconds to get rid of him. So we're going to Alt just to the right. Get rid of Mr. Bug. Like so. And then any other imperfections you want to do. And then all you're going to do is click File, and then you're going to click Save, and that will save it back to Lightroom. And that's pretty much it. And there's your final image. So that's it for this video. Um, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate that. If you like the video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, yeah. please do consider. Really? See, even she says consider subscribing and I'll catch you on the next one.